Story recapped here. Today I'm going to show you a science fiction drama film called The Shape of Water. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 1962, during the Cold War, there exists Occam Aerospace Research Center, a secret government laboratory in Baltimore, Maryland. Elisa Esposito, a mute woman, works there as a cleaner. She lives in a tiny apartment just above a movie theater. Elisa's life looks like a well-practiced routine because she does the same things every day. Ever since she was a child, Elisa already had wounds on her neck, and she constantly wonders where it came from. Her next-door neighbor, Giles, a middle-aged illustrator, is one of Elisa's closest friends. Her neighbors are relatively nice to her as she is a polite and friendly woman. She always takes the bus on her way to work, and she is always welcomed by her closest co-worker, Zelda Fuller. When other co-workers harass or intimidate Elisa, Zelda always stands for her. Both of them are in charge of keeping rooms and other facilities clean. Their work consists of going around offices and rooms that higher executives use. On a typical work shift, one of the officials announces that a new and valuable asset is added to the research center, captured from South America. A vessel is brought inside along with Colonel Richard Strickland, the one in charge of the project. As Elisa takes a closer look at the vessel, something from the inside thumps it, grabbing everyone's attention. Frightened and confused, the two ladies leave the room and go about their work. While cleaning the men's restroom, Elisa and Zelda meet Colonel Strickland, who immediately gives off a very menacing vibe. A while later, they both hear a scream from the room where the vessel is placed. Strickland emerges to the hallway with two fingers missing from his left hand, making the guards run to his rescue. Elisa and Zelda are assigned to quickly clean the bloody room where they keep the new asset. As Elisa splashes a bucket of water on the floor, Colonel Strickland's two missing fingers come out from a corner. Elisa carefully places it in a bag to send it to the hospital. She walks toward the vessel and discovers that the asset is an amphibian man. Fascinated by it, Elisa comes back to the room the next day to see the amphibian man once more. She knocks gently at the vessel, but the amphibian man is now transferred to a small pool just beside it. She calls its attention by offering it a boiled egg. The chained creature comes closer, Elisa takes a good look at it and places the egg in front of the creature. In the next following days, Elisa continuously sneaks into the room to spend time with it as she feeds it boiled eggs. She even teaches it to use sign language, and out of kindness, she plays music for it. She seems much happier now that she has met the amphibian man. While dancing in front of the vessel to entertain it, Dr. Robert Hofstetler, a scientist secretly a Russian spy named Dmitry Mozenkov, sees Elisa forming a close bond to the amphibian man. He reports this to his Soviet handlers, saying that this creature is intelligent and can communicate. Hofstetler's bosses disregard this and orders him to kill it before the Americans advance their scientific research. During one of Elisa's meeting with the amphibian man, she saw that it is chained to a small platform where Strickland tortures it brutally. Meanwhile, Strickland's boss, General Hoyt, wants to harvest the creature's body for further research in space technology. Strickland manages to persuade Hoyt that they should vivisect the creature's body. Elisa overhears their conversation, and it devastates her. She asks help from Giles to liberate the creature. She knows for sure that if she does not do anything, the amphibian man will surely die. He brushes her off, but she remains persistent. Finally, Giles agrees to be part of her plan after he ponders that Elisa is his only real friend and the only one that truly listens to him. Hofstetler meets with his bosses again. They give him a poisonous injection to completely kill the amphibian man, hesitant, Hofstetler has to obey their commands. In the meantime, Elisa and Giles orchestrate their plan to pull off their escape plan for the amphibian man, he uses his skills to decorate a van and make a fake ID for himself. In the lab, Elisa becomes the unwanted attention by Strickland after he deliberately spills his glass of water, leaving her no choice but to clean his office. Elisa walks out after Strickland harasses her. Hofstetler prepares the poison as Elisa initiates her plan by turning cameras away from the enclosure. At Strickland's office, Hofstetler discovers Elisa's plan and decides to help her. In the vessel room, Elisa is startled when she saw Hofstetler, he gives her the keys to unchain the amphibian man. As Zelda leaves work, she senses that Elisa is up to something and decides to check up on her. Elisa sneaks the amphibian man into a laundry hamper and pushes it around the facility while Giles drives to their agreed spot. He enters the premises but is unsuccessful. Zelda finds out about Elisa's plan. Hofstetler shuts down power with a bomb device and uses a syringe on a guard who stopped Giles upon entrance. They successfully get the amphibian man inside the van, and they drive away. At the same time, Strickland and the security team rush to the exit but are too late. This left him devastated and furious. 
Elisa, Giles, and the amphibian man safely arrive at Elisa's apartment. The creature is kept in the bathtub with chemicals that Hofstetler instructed her to submerge it in to maintain the amphibian man's health. The amphibian man regains his strength after being out of the water for some time. Elisa plans to release him into a nearby canal in several days when it is most probable to rain to provide access to the ocean. In the lab, Strickland and his team investigated how the group managed to escape and steal their asset. When Elisa and Zelda go to work the following evening, Strickland interrogates them, but he doubts that they are responsible for it. He does not think that two women can successfully perform a heist in a high security government lab. Giles falls asleep at the apartment while watching over the amphibian man. It gets out of the tub and ends up eating one of Giles' cats. He startles the amphibian man, it ends up scratching his arm, and it also runs out of the apartment. It gets as far as the cinema downstairs before Elisa, filled with worry, finds him and returns to her apartment. Upon returning, the amphibian man touches Giles on the head and wounded arm. One night, Elisa struggles to fall asleep. She checks up on the amphibian man currently living in her bathroom. The both of them look at each other longingly and continue to have an intimate moment. For the first time in her life, Elisa feels connected to someone. The love that she so desperately desires is now present in her life. She thinks that her life has a new meaning ever since the amphibian man arrived. Back at Hofstetler's place, his Russian bosses visit him. Already sensing danger, he hides a knife in his defense, but he remains safe as they leave. Giles wakes up one morning and discovers hair growing on his head where there was previously a balding spot. Also, it leaves him confused that the cut on his arm is not completely healed. As Elisa and the amphibian man grow closer, they make love. She even floods the bathroom so they can swim together. This causes the theater to have leakages. The theater owner complains about it, forcing Giles to disturb Elisa and the amphibian man in their precious moment. Back at the lab, General Hoyt informs Strickland that in 36 hours, he should recover their asset, or his career and life will be over. Elisa arrives home one morning and realizes that the amphibian man grows weaker by the day. She decides that it is time to let it go soon. She is unprepared for their depart that she even imagines a world where the both of them could be together freely. In this imaginary world, music fills the air, she can sing, and the love of her life dances with her. Meanwhile, Hofstetler is shot by one of his Russian bosses, but Strickland, waiting for perfect timing, not only shoots and kills both bosses but also shoots Hofstetler, having realized that he is a spy. Strickland tortures him to get information about who got away with stealing their asset. Hofstetler refuses to disclose any information. Already in much pain, his last words are, no names. No rankings. They just clean. This makes Strickland think, and it gives him a realization, he is more than shocked to learn that the two cleaning ladies are involved. He goes to Zelda's home to interrogate her and her husband, Brewster. Strickland starts to act manic as he is desperate to catch the amphibian man. Out of fear, Zelda's husband confesses that the amphibian man is with Elisa. Zelda scolds her husband and then calls Elisa to warn her. Strickland, filled with angst, leaves to ransack Elisa's apartment. Again, he arrives too late, but he sees a calendar that reveals where she plans to release the amphibian man. At the canal, they bid their goodbyes to the amphibian man. Strickland reaches the canal, knocks Giles down, then continues to shoot the amphibian man and Elisa. Accepting their fate, they hold hands dramatically. Giles manages to get up and hit Strickland down. The amphibian man gains its strength and heals its own bullet wounds. Strickland is impressed and calls the amphibian man a god before it slashes Strickland's throat with its claws. As the police arrive, the amphibian man takes Elisa into the water. This happens as Giles and Zelda watch in sadness and despair. The amphibian man kisses Elisa underwater and touches the wounds on her neck. This instantly revives her. They remain underwater, in love and happy that they can be together. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.